brief readings from our gospel text. He spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Christmas in June. Our beloved John the Baptist and his nativity are here before us, which I love. We could use some more winter weather, I think. John the Baptist in particular was what I call the finger of God. Quite literally, the finger of God. He was born for a reason. And that reason was to point the way that the Christ should go. That was his job. His job was to trim the branches and wear the path so that Christ could enter in with people's sins, uh, with people who have repented, and He who forgives our sins. So like I said, John the Baptist was a, is a tool. He was created for a purpose. The cousin of Jesus the Christ to point the way to be God's finger. And so when the Christ was born, and well, before he was born, and Elizabeth, John's mother, went to St. Mary and saw that she was pregnant, John the Baptist leapt in her mother's womb. He was so happy that even in proximity, he re rejoiced in the coming of the Savior. And so then when Christ was born, all of those who were of his race had repented and Christ came to forgive the sins of all. And so it's no surprise why Zechariah is praising, he's praising both John the Baptist and the Christ because this psalm cannot be seen as merely for John the Baptist, but for his role that he would prepare the way for the Christ. And so blessed be the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and that he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, which we all know Christ would come from the lineage of David. But there's one thing in particular that I want us to notice in this text. He spoke by mouth, of his holy prophets from old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. I'm not going to say anything that's terribly shocking, but believe it or not, there are people in the world and there are people who simply hate Christians, simply despise Christianity. And you know who despises Christianity the most? Christians. Christians. Why? Because we have the faith and yet we sin against Christ over and over and over. And then we rely on Christ to forgive our sins. That's literally the definition of being a Christian. As Luther said, simul husus et peccator in Latin. We are simultaneously saint and sinner. We sin against God every single day. We speak against God. We speak against each other. And we even are a bad example to the world who hates us. We need to pray to the Holy Spirit that Christianity and that we who are Christians be bold in our confession. This church should be filled. All churches should be filled 
with people who come to learn the Word of God, that not only they would be, uh, that, that they would be sanctified by it, made holy by it, but that we actually go out and tell other people about it. You know who the world hates? It hates Christianity. In fact, we can see that in the American landscape very, very much. Because Christianity is shrinking. It's growing smaller. While in Africa it's booming, here it is taken as a grain of salt. Shrinking. Smaller and smaller. And there are two reasons. Number one, because the world will always hate Christianity, will always be the, the enemy of Christianity. Number two, Christians must be bolder in confessing the faith. We must confess the faith with true understanding. And when we confess the faith, we are being as John the Baptist, preparing the way, hopefully that our enemies will walk Hopefully the world will walk that way. And at the end of that path, at the end of our lives, is Jesus the Christ. And so what, what does Christ save us from? The unholy trinity plus one. Sin, death, and the devil. And then the enemies of God. And I, when I say the enemies of God, I don't mean simply that, the Christ, that Christians are enemies of God, but rather these are the absolute dis, to people who disdain Christ. Those who do not repent, those who do not care, even the apathetic, even the milquetoast, even those who simply don't care. So when Christ comes, He comes and He comes to the cross and He dies and there He, he proclaims victory over what? Sin, death by His resurrection, and devil again by His crucifixion. In fact, Christ after His, resurre or after his crucifixion went down into hell itself. And the Greek word there, carusio, many people translated as that he preached to those in prison. That's a bad translation. The translation should be he proclaimed his victory. There is no hope in those who have rejected Christ. He did not preach as though to win over people in hell, but rather he went down to proclaim his victory in the face of Satan, saying, you cannot touch these people. These are my people. You might make them suffer. You might make them hurt. But you will never have their souls. I've won. I, I have proclaimed them. Fourth one, our enemies. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. So the world hates us. Who cares? Christ Jesus died for us and He died for them as well. But what we have to do is speak. Speak to them in love and kindness. And that begins by speaking to one another with love and kindness. If we cannot speak to each other with love, kindness, and understanding, there's no way we're going to be able to win the lost. No way. So as it is, we give thanks to Christ, for we have been delivered from the hand of our enemies that we might serve Him without fear. As Luther said when he was under the papal bull of excommunication and he literally had a death warrant out for him, he says this, Take my head. I have a God who will give me a new one. 
that's Christianity. In a world that hates us, repentance, the forgiveness of sins, over and over and over. And every time Christ looks at you and says, I forgive you, I forgive you. Listen to this pastor. He says, I forgive you. Eat this flesh, drink this blood, I forgive you. Furthermore, when you eat this body and you drink this blood, you take Jesus with you outside of this church. Have you thought about that? You become a literal temple for the flesh and blood of Jesus. And we dare not, should not, leave this church with being a tabernacle with Christ's body and blood and keep it to ourselves. Let us preach. Let us teach. Let us speak kindness to those who hate us. Because it is in that kindness that Christ speaks through you. The Holy Spirit speaks through you. That we might win the lost. And in that, the Holy Spirit works in the way that He will and the way that He will not. And from that, we know this. That we have spoken Christ Jesus. And that we have been delivered from the hand of our enemies. That we might serve Him. And this is what we must do. Especially in a country that's, shrink that's shrinking in Christianity. Serve Him without fear. Without being afraid. Let us be bold. Let us rely on Christ, the crucified. And point to the empty tomb and say, God is not here. Christ is not here. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.